Hey, this is Lindsay Caldwell with If You Can Dream It, Do It, and I'm so excited to have Carly Pierce here who just signed to Big Machine, who has everyone from Reba McIntyre to Taylor Swift, so a huge cast that she's joining. And I want to take it back to when you were little. How did you know that you wanted to do music? I, I'm from Kentucky originally, and I always grew up singing. Um, I come from a family that loves music. And nobody's musical, but mm -hmm. they all can sing if they were really being honest. Um, and genuinely, I was singing before I could talk. And uh, when I was 11, started singing in a bluegrass band and did talent shows and different things like that. And just, I, I really truly have never known a day that I want to be a country artist. It's amazing. And even when you were at 11 years old, you were in a bluegrass band, right? Yeah, and even looking back on that now, I'm like, why did those guys let me in that band? I was a kid. Yeah. Um, but that was kind of like my first taste of singing on a stage with a real band and kind of what that felt like. And mm -hmm. I, I knew in that moment that was what I wanted to do. And when you were 16, you went to your parents and said, I want to be homeschooled. Yeah, I had gone to a public school my whole life. And I went to my dad and I said, Dad, I want to quit high school. And he was like, that's really funny. And um, I convinced him to let me take the summer for, to find a homeschooling program that would get me into a university. And he let me. And so I did it and saw an audition for Dollywood. And I was like, why wouldn't I want to go work for Dolly Parton? So yeah. I auditioned, got a job, and moved to Pigeon Forge with my mom. And I really did work 9 to 5 for Dolly. That's amazing. And you shared a one-bedroom apartment with your mom. Right? I did. And it was grizzly bear decorated. Amazing. Um, and there was a jacuzzi tub in our bedroom. <laughs> so super awkward, but memories. What did you learn during that time working at Dollywood? You know, I was the youngest. I was 16, 17 at the time. And everybody was either well into college or out of college. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it taught me to kind of be around older people and also, we did six shows a day, five days a week. So wow. I had to learn how to sing sick. I had to learn um, to always be on, you know, mm -hmm. as a performer and really what it meant to be a performer. And my voice really kind of went through the grind of having to be strong for all of those shows. And so I feel like I learned that was kind of my dress rehearsal before that. Mm -hmm. And then you headed to Nashville. I did. What was that like? Overwhelming yeah. because in Pigeon Forge I was kind of like a little star, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on all the billboards and all that fun stuff. And you get here and you're like, oh my goodness, this is so much more about uh, being an artist than just being a singer. Mm -hmm. I was a singer before, and um, so I kind of just jumped into the roller coaster and realized this was a journey, and it definitely beat me up at times. And I, but I knew it was what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted. I knew that. I could find the right team and the right craft and kind of grow as an artist and as a songwriter that I had something to say. And I want to talk about 2012 because you had a deal. I did. What was that like when that fell through? I had a developmental record deal on Sony and uh, I, my a and lady got fired mm -hmm. and I remember having to, I watched the whole town go from right in my face to shutting the door and mm -hmm. acting like they didn't know me from songwriters to publishers to just everyone. And that was really hard, I was 22 and everything was right there and I watched it slam in my face and I had to go start nannying and cleaning Airbnbs and that was crazy because I couldn't get a publisher to, to take a meeting with me. Mm. And I knew so many people in the industry told me to move home, so many people told me no, so many people told me I was old news and you know, it's just that fire inside of knowing that you haven't arrived yet and knowing that you had so much more to say and I am just a really driven person naturally and I said, you know what? I'm gonna cry about it, I'm gonna get it out, probably drink some wine. Yeah. And then I'm going that. to get up and I'm gonna work harder or as hard as anybody else in this town. And I'm gonna make it happen for myself to mm. where they come to me. It's amazing. I was just interviewing um, Jonathan Kane who wrote Don't Stop Believing. And it's something that his dad actually told him when he was struggling in LA to be a musician. And he said his dad was really a vision keeper in those times. Mm -hmm. So in those times when you're cleaning the Airbnbs and not sure if it would come together, who's been your vision keeper with this dream of yours? My parents are really amazing and have always supported me and always told me that I could do it and always been kind of a vessel to let me do this. I think Jesus is mm -hmm. another one. Um, I My faith is really important to me and I think he is always I've, I've prayed so many times on my knees lord if this is not your plan for me take it away from me and always there's some little feather that's dropped right in front of me where i go 
all right, I'll do it another day. So I think those two. It's amazing. I love that. So moving on to now, you just recently toured with Kelsey Ballerini. Mm -hmm. You were her opening act. Mm -hmm. What was that like, and what did Kelsey really teach you about this industry? I love Kelsey so much. Yeah. Um, I think Kelsey is such a great example of uh, paying it forward. Mm -hmm. She's ha had a lot of, um, she's bulldozed the door down for people like me. When I first moved here, females were not having any kind of success at all. And you kind of were penalized if you were a female. And she just bulldozed the doors down and has really latched onto me in the way that I feel like Taylor Swift kind of latched onto her and she's not forgotten that and mm -hmm. she's been such a supporter of mine from the beginning and um, I consider her a really good friend a mentor she inspires me I am so proud of her because I've watched this whole thing happen for her and I got to tell her that I uh, got the deal before it was public and awesome. so we got to share in that and she's just been she's been a really good just support system and made me believe in just the heart of people in this town and you don't have to change mm -hmm. in, in who you are and so she's she's amazing I hope that we get to do a lot more things together. So cool. And another person that um, tweeted support for you with every little thing was Lucy Hale and you actually were her background singer so can you talk about how that came about? So Lucy's another dear friend. Yeah. I <laughs> When I was cleaning the Airbnbs <laughs> I got a call that Lucy Hale from Pretty Little Liars needed a backup singer for a music video. And I was a closet, I don't even know if she knows this, but I was a closet Pretty Little Liars fan, so I was like, oh, okay. So I went, and it was so interesting to be on the stage at the Opry, because that's where they mm -hmm. shot the thing. And I was like, okay, I'm the background. I'm not the front girl, I'm mm -hmm. the background singer. But I, I, I enjoyed it, and I went to her tour manager, and I said, if you ever need a backup singer, let me know. Why would they ever need a backup singer? But you never know unless you ask. So. Two weeks later, I'm nanny, job number two, and they call me and they're like, can you move to LA for about a month and do the Ellen show with us and tour with Lucy? And I was like, yes. And so I went out there and I didn't tell her that I was an artist. I told myself that I was there to work for her mm -hmm. and I needed to be her backup singer and do that and be part of her band. And she came in and she was like, I YouTubed you. Why are you singing back up for me? No way. <laughs> so she came into her soul. She knew. Mm -hmm. She knew, and she has been a lot like Kelsey, such a strong um, supporter, friend, mentor. Doesn't have to use her platform to help me, mm -hmm. but always has. And mm -hmm. it's helped me to gain social media followers. It helped me, even in a setting of, you know, I got to do Jimmy Kimmel recently with the Josh Abbott band, but before that I had never done any TV, nothing like that, but I genuinely believe that those radio visits that I went to with her and the TV things that we got to do and being on stage really helped me to be ready now because as a new artist you don't get these kind of opportunities. Right. So I, again, like I think for anybody who's aspiring, say yes to everything, even if it's mm -hmm. not what you want. Did I want to be a backup singer? No. But if I wouldn't have taken that job, I don't know where I would be right now. Mm -hmm. What would you say, um, I heard you say it in another interview, but to the naysayers that told you you'll always be known as backup singer if you take this gig? <laughs> I was literally told, you will never get out of the background singer. Mm -hmm. And these are influential people. Right. And it was hard. And I, this was a moment where I went and cried in my car. And I just, follow your gut, mm -hmm. follow your heart. Your, your own inner inner confidence booster mm -hmm. and I think we all have an intuition to know what's right for us right. and I genuinely believe humble yourself and always stay grounded and understand that you never know especially now in the business you just never know what opportunity is going to mm -hmm. lead to whatever and I'm so thankful yeah. that I did it and you mentioned Jesus kind of being like a vision keeper for you. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite verse or something that you've really clung to during these past eight years in Nashville waiting for a moment like this? Oh, man. I mean, just proverb in Proverbs, it's just so much about trusting in the Lord and understanding that his timing is never delayed yeah. and having complete peace of, of um, knowing that he's going to guide you and mm -hmm. that you, it's kind of out of your control. Mm -hmm. So I've really leaned on... This, this moment for me of signing this deal is, was not delayed. Mm -hmm. This was absolutely part of the plan for me. And I can look back now, 
at 26 and realized that at 22 that record deal that didn't happen was absolutely the best thing that ever mm -hmm. happened to me and I'm thankful now for it. It's beautiful. Well, every little thing got picked as a highway find. What did that mean to you? And obviously it then skyrocketed after that. Well, you know, I had built a relationship with XM two years prior. Uh, actually, when I was singing back up for Lucy with a song called Blame the Whiskey that they put on the On the Horizon show, which is not as cool as mm -hmm. the highway find, but it's kind of the weekend show. And so, you know, that's kind of at least hearing your song on the radio. Right. And I also had... Um, success with the Josh Abbott band with Wasn't That Drunk on XM, but to have my own song, I really wanted it to be a highway find. I'd always been, it was like something I really wanted. Um, I never thought this song, Every Little Thing, was written for therapy for me mm -hmm. about a boyfriend that broke my heart, and I really never thought that anybody would hear it. I certainly didn't think it would be my first single, and that's just a testament of, you put out a song, they knew JR at XM, he was like, this is your song, and really? I want to do it now. I had no preparation, no nothing, mm -hmm. and I was just like, oh my gosh, like I'm just gonna throw it out there and see what happens. Yeah. And immediately the song just sprouted its own wings and it's making me realize that the genre, especially country, they want to hear true, real, raw lyrics. Mm -hmm. And it really does all begin with the song. And like this, this journey has just reminded me of if you have a song that can connect with people on a heart level mm -hmm. and open yourself up and be vulnerable enough to let them in, the sky is the limit. It's amazing. And then the Big Machine deal. You said off camera, Scott actually flew to come see your performance. Mm -hmm. How did that come together and how did you know Big Machine was the right fit for you? Interesting. For so long I've just wanted a deal. Mm -hmm. I just wanted a record deal. And I got to this place probably a year and a half ago with my publisher and Busby, my producer, where I said, I don't want a deal unless it's the right one. Mm -hmm. And I want to wait for the right partner. Because I had built so much on my own and done so much on my own, I wanted to make sure that I was wise. Because getting a record deal is not. I've had so many friends have record deals, and it's not. It didn't take anything. Right. Um, when the song came out immediately, Scott and his team, um, his director of A&R, Allison Jones, immediately was just like, this song kills me. You have your three minutes. and. They, they, they became involved very fast, mm -hmm. and I felt the passion for me as an artist, the vision of what I was doing. Scott had so much respect for what I had built and wasn't trying to change me into something else. And they genuinely were just looking to partner with me. And my single, you know, I signed my record deal two weeks ago, my single's going to radio next month. And so Crazy. I built so much and did so much on my own, and the blood, sweat, and tears mm -hmm. of doing a lot of things on the front end and laying at night sometimes and being like, is this ever gonna do anything? Right. To now kind of getting to the front of the line because I have a product that, that they are seeing is reacting and also I'm not somebody who's walking into a meeting and going, I don't know who I am or I don't know what I want. I'm showing them the entire visual. I'm showing them from every angle of my brand mm -hmm. who I am and what I want to be. So I think that's amazing. And he loves that. I, I yes. just I'm so Oh, I'm so grateful. Scott Borchetta is president. I love you, Big Machine. Yeah, he's awesome. He always talks about finding artists who have individuality. That's mm -hmm. like his number one thing. What do you want for people who haven't heard your music to feel when they hear your music? I think there's been such a void, um, in the, especially in the female genre mm -hmm. of our, or female portion of our genre, for uh, the just kind of mature woman who's just singing country songs, mm -hmm. the modern country girl, mm -hmm. not the pop country girl, not the girl who's, I'm not very cool to begin with, and so I'm just, I'm really trying to play to that authentic country listener that, I'm 26, I've lived some things, I've had heartbreak, mm -hmm. I have, you know, I, I just feel like I've, I've got some depth to what I want to sing about, and also just from a production standpoint, this is more about my voice, mm -hmm. and more about storytelling in the way that Trisha Yearwood and Alison Krauss and Patti Loveless and Faith Hill and all these females that I idolized um, did and I just think that is the mold I want to go into that kind of mysterious mature woman which is interesting because I always thought age was going to be oh my gosh I'm getting too old I'm in my right. mid 20s but I really want to be that kind of little bit more mature mm -hmm. female that I idolized in the early 2000s. What would you tell 22 year old Carly who is cleaning Airbnbs in a nanny knowing what you know now oh my so many things first of all I would tell her <laughs> to calm down and to 
love herself mm -hmm. and to trust God and trust in her her voice and to not take so much of her identity and put it in other people in, in this town mm -hmm. because I think you can get lost if I'm honest with you I think I got lost for a long time internally mm -hmm. and I think the moment that you truly believe and you lean on God and you work your butt off you can do it you can do anything totally. and I think just telling her it's all gonna be okay because mm -hmm. I don't think she knew it I love oh my gosh that hit me I love that <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. Um, and then the best advice you've been given about following your dreams. Oh, ah, I've had so many different things. My mom and my grandma always told me just to be kind and be humble and be classy and to work really hard. Mm -hmm. I come from a family where they, they absolutely are like, we will help you, but you have to, right. you have to work hard. Put in and the then work. my publisher, Daniel Lee, he gets embarrassed when I talk about him on <laughs> things, but at BMG, my mm -hmm. publisher, he has just changed the game for me and he kind of gave me the voice and helped me to find my confidence again. And he has always told me, be 100% authentic to you and you will win every mm -hmm. time. And every single time I can look back at songs or look back at production or look back at shows or outfits or anything or whatever. And when I wasn't being authentic to myself, it didn't work. Right. You have to be authentic to you. Amazing. And last question, heading into the new year, what are you most excited about? I mean, I'm just excited to meet people. I'm excited to go on a radio tour. Yeah. I'm excited to make my record. I, I feel like because Every Little Thing is my first single, the sky's the limit as far as production and songs. And I feel like that song was so personal and artsy and, and truly who I am. And so I, I'm going to be able to make the record that I want. And so I'm just really excited to kind of get started. Amazing. I said last question, but I actually have one more. Nashville is a tough town. Oh. And being a girl in country music, I actually had no idea how hard it was until I moved here. And I'm not even an artist, so I can't even imagine. What would you tell those girls who are struggling to make it? Mm. Find what makes you you. Find your lane, find your identity, find why you matter, which is such a weird statement. Find why you matter and why people would want to listen to you. Work harder than the boys. Don't wait for somebody to do it for you. I load the van, I drive the van, I help my band, I book the shows, I make the connections. I don't lean on anybody else and be tough. Mm. I love that. Check out Every Little Thing on Spotify now by yeah. Carly Pierce. <laughs> Bye, guys.